Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of an extremely rare planetary nebula, a type of an object that you kind of see behind me. Although in this case, once again, the name itself doesn't really apply very well to these objects. They have nothing to do with planets. And in reality they represent a type of a nebula produced by stars extremely similar to our own sun, right after these stars go through their red giant period or as they're about to turn into a white dwarf. With this probably now being one of the more popular images of this phenomena, because this was one of the images released by the James Webb. And because these nebula often form extremely beautiful formations in the night skies, they've also been extremely popular with various amateur astronomers, although some of them are somewhat difficult to see because of their distances. But what's really intriguing about many of these objects is how extremely unique they are and how they're actually able to produce so many different shapes and will always have very unique features inside of them. For example, this one right here is known as the Lemon Slice Nebula, IC3568, and it kind of does resemble a lemon slice, with a lot of them also forming very unusual bipolar shapes, often extending in both directions, and this is usually because these objects are created by some kind of a binary system on the inside, where a smaller star and a red giant interact, throwing off a lot of the gas in two directions because of the jets from one of the objects. And in this case, as you can see from this simulation, they kind of end up forming this unusual structure that then becomes visible from extremely far away. A lot of these objects are at least a few light years across. But in this video, we're going to be discussing a very recent discovery of what seems to be the oldest, potentially the biggest, and also one of the strangest planetary nebula discovered to date, found inside this open cluster known as Messier 37, a cluster that seems to contain at least 500 known stars and potentially has a total mass of about 1500 solar masses, with the overall age of all of the stars here being around half a billion years old, with at least a few of the stars in this region already being in their red giant stage or essentially being in that stage right before they turn into planetary nebula when they essentially start bubbling up and throw off a huge amount of gas from the outer shell. And that's exactly what happened to one of these stars approximately 70,000 years ago. A star that ended up producing the object that you see right here. Now it is kind of difficult to see it, and that's because the distance here is about 4,500 light years away from us, but even at this distance, this emission nebula contains the telltale signs of ionized gas ejected from an ancient red giant something that the scientists in this case were kind of surprised to discover. First of all, because this is actually an extremely rare object because of its location. This is only the third known planetary nebula discovered inside any kind of a cluster. But in this case, because it's inside this open cluster, it actually allows this object to stay relatively undisturbed by anything else, and specifically allows this nebula to expand even larger. Normally, if it was located anywhere else in outer space, the intergalactic gas would have disturbed it so much that it would probably be invisible by now. But by being inside the cluster that shelters it from a lot of interruptions, it was able to expand much farther, and more intriguingly, was able to become much older than any other planetary nebula we've ever seen. Now normally, a typical star such as our Sun is going to go through the stage relatively quickly, anywhere from about 5 to maybe 25,000 years after which point all of the gas from the star dissipates across the galaxy and basically goes on its merry way, most likely ended up in some other object in the future. But the nebula itself becomes more or less invisible. Prior to this, some of the oldest nebula were only about 25,000 years old. And even at this point this is already pushing their limit. But this unusual object is much older, it's at least 70,000 years old according to the scientists. And they were essentially able to calculate its age by looking at the speed of the dispersion of material and then looking at the total size of this object. In terms of the total size, it's just over 10 light years across, one of the biggest if not the biggest ever seen. And assuming that it was expanding at constant velocity, it must have started doing so approximately 70,000 years ago, which is essentially when the original star ended its red giant stage and started to turn into a white dwarf. Which is of course the future of our own sun as well, although here we're talking about like 7 to 8 billion years in the future. You can actually learn a little bit more about this in one of the videos in the description below. But by approximating the total mass of the expanded shell and also realizing that many stars in this cluster are no older than 500 million years old, 
The scientists came to a conclusion that the star that essentially created this must have been approximately 2.8 solar masses, so definitely more massive than our own sun and very likely a lot more active. A star that survived for 500 million years before becoming a red giant and before it created this beautiful planetary nebula. But the other thing that makes this particular discovery kind of interesting is the location in the galaxy. Unlike a lot of other nebula and a lot of other clusters, this is actually sort of on the outskirts of the Milky Way. Or essentially it's in the opposite direction from the center of our own galaxy. If you were to look at it from planet Earth, you would first of all have to turn around completely in order to discover this cluster and the nebula. This is a location we often refer to as the galactic anticenter. And moreover, it seems to be located right at the tip of one of the nearby galactic arms. And because of its location, it's one of the brightest and one of the easier visible clusters seen from planet Earth. Meaning that studying this particular nebula or discovering more unusual features inside this cluster is going to be so much easier for a lot of future studies and a lot of future observations. Although at the moment we only have this image right here, not really that good yet, to be able to produce any detailed observations or any detailed analysis. But because these nebula play a very important role in the chemical evolution of the galaxy, and they actually tend to produce a lot of important elements inside of them as well, the discovery of this really old planetary nebula is going to be exceptionally important for the scientists studying the evolution of galaxies. And because even after 70,000 years, it's still visible in a lot of different frequencies of light, it's quite likely that it's going to serve as a very important investigation target for a lot of astronomers in the future. But this is also an extremely rare object. Not only is it so big and so old, it's also one of the few spherical nebula without any major protrusions or binary features. The vast majority of nebulae discovered will often have something sticking out somewhere. This one doesn't. And so finding these spherically symmetrical objects, especially ones not so far away from us, is already quite a big achievement. Especially because it's only recently that the scientists started to figure out how some of these unusual features are formed in these nebulae. For example, in this case, a slight warp inside the disk of the star might produce certain features that eventually produce something like this. And so eventually, through various computer simulations, it's quite possible that the scientists are going to be able to work out what this particular star system looked like in the past by basically tracing back the shape of the star system through the shapes and the deformations seen in the planetary nebula. It's not something we can do just yet, but it's something that a lot of scientists are definitely interested in discovering. Although chances are, just like with this nebula, this here is probably going to be next on the list for James Webb Telescope. And so once James Webb is able to take more pictures and potentially discover something else incredible about this particular object, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out all of the relevant links and links to other videos on this topic in the description below. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.